uh, vocab Malone when he was describing about uh, Deuteronomy 28. You know, it's just interesting that um, he doesn't present the full picture. He just presents a picture that he thinks will paint Israelites as not handling the scriptures correctly when dealing with that chapter. But he doesn't address all the points made you know, that lead us to the conclusion. It's like he just goes to 68 and assumes that we believe we're Israelites just 28, 68, when, you know, there's a whole chapter there of curses outlining people. And even says in the chapter that these curses will be on these people for a sign and a wonder. Uh, basically, uh, you know, alluding to the fact that we should be able to identify these people by the sign that God is putting on them. So, you know, if I was going to ask vocab anything, it'd be who do, who does these signs point to on earth? If you believe that the Israelites still exist, um, these signs should point to a people. So, you know, which people is it? The Israelites of the old Testament are the people that this happened to primarily. Do they no longer exist today? Well, they have descendants. They, uh, you know, they have descendants, certainly. Well, it says that these uh, curses would be on them for a sign, meaning we should be able to read the sign and say, okay, these are the people that this happened to. So okay. are you saying that there's no more signs or the people don't exist? Like, is there not a distinct people group that we can identify as the Israelites of the Old Testament? Well, uh, you know, it's interesting the way you, you guys will use sign here in verse 46. It says, be a sign and a wonder against you. Right. So it's not a sign to identify the ethnic group after the ethnic group has forgotten who they are. It's a sign to show Yahweh's judgment and wrath against these people. And watch what it says, against you and your offspring forever. So if it's forever, right. the sign would never be lost. Right, but nonetheless, there's still a sign on these people, correct? Yeah, but your theory has it being lost. If it, it, uh, You're misinterpreting what the sign's about. It's not saying, look, this sign basically lets you know you're an Israelite. The sign is, this shows God's wrath against sin. That's the sign and wonder against you and your offspring forever. But even interpreting the way you have it, it says forever. So how could they lose it if it's forever? What does forever always mean forever in the scripture? I mean, you're a, you're a scholar. I'm sure you, you wouldn't agree to that. But Saying the Bible never indicates the way you're supposed to identify Israelites is about who's the most cursed people group in the planet. That idea that you have, that the way to identify an Israelite is to find out who's the most cursed, is nowhere in scripture. So well, I'll say, tell me how. Tell me how we identify them. Can we identify them, or do you not know who they are today? And, and what is your criteria yes. based on that you would identify them with? Based upon Romans 9-11, through 11, the way you identify those who are of Israel is those who have the faith of Abraham. That's the Bible talking. And we can't identify a distinct people group anymore. There's 18 nations described in Genesis that God <laughs> no, there's created. Not. No, there's not. There's more than 18. That's a One West idea that there's only 18 nations. That's something so, you've got... There's at least 70 when you read when you read at least 70, and those nations don't stay the same because they have descendants as well. <laughs> no, there's not. There's more than 18. That's a One West idea that there's only 18 nations. That's something you've got. There's at least 70 when you read when you read at least 70, and those nations don't stay the same because they have descendants as well. Bible. The Bible. The Bible is nine. In Romans 9, Paul, I believe in chapter, uh, verse 3 or 4, he says, that, My brethren, according to the flesh, and he's talking about the seed of Israel. There are prophecies and things concerning the seed of Israel all throughout the scripture. Yeah. And can we identify who the flesh and blood Israelites are today? Yes or no? Uh, some of them, but not all of them. And the Bible never tells us we're supposed to do that. So it's okay. not even in the Bible. You're inventing something, so you can find you can find something that was never lost. That's that's not true at all. There's scriptures that I can go to if you like that describe how the whole world would take crafty counsel to say, "Let them be no more in remembrance." What's, what does that mean, according to ancient Near Eastern rhetoric? What does that mean? <laughs> well, What's that mean? 
It means to destroy them. It means to wipe them out. It doesn't mean to make them forget who they are. Because ancient Near Eastern rhetoric, that's exactly what they would say. Well, it said, said, let them be no longer in remembrance. So, yeah, um, they don't even remember who they are. It's a total destruction of them. It doesn't mean that they're going to forget their identity. The counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. It doesn't say, well, let us completely and utterly obliterate and destroy them, especially when there's prophecies. But this could be a chance to gain understanding. It says annihilate them. And that's why the modern translations have a better picture. And that's why the modern translations have a better picture. And that's why the modern translations have a better picture. That they were Israel, whoever these people might be. I don't think that they just completely forgot they used to be a part of the covenant. So I think that's a straw man. Um, but I I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. A sincere honors to you, other elders and brethren, fellow believers of this faith, and shalom to the hopefully elect. So, this was interesting. You know, this is an interesting video. Maybe God wants his own mom enslaved with question mark shocking debate versus Israelite. So I didn't get to the point where this came into play. Maybe they was going back and forth. But this was interesting because this uh, Israelite, whoever he is, I would say did a great job in this debate. Right? Now, it's easy. When you're in these debates, you're sitting on the outside. It's easy to, to pick it up and put it together. But um, he was really trapping vocab in his words, and vocab was getting very frustrated. And um, we see that debates really go nowhere. I mean, it's a, it's for the entertainment purposes, if you want to call it that. But uh, I get a lot out of it, as far as these questions Christians come up with, and the sneaky, you know, around the way about that they present their information the um the books that they use the scholars that they deal with and he, he even said something about modern translations are better <laughs> well modern translation translations is is a form of reformation and we know what happened with the reformationists right and there was quite a few of them so i want to just touch here on um Psalms 83, I believe it's Psalms 83 and 3, where he said cut off really had nothing to do with discontinuing the nation, but cutting them out altogether. He said he went, he, I guess I put it in there, I'm not sure, how Edom was cut off in there. Uh, when, when you read Malachi, Malachi 4 and 1, well, I believe it's 1, it says uh, he should be cut off. And um, but he will return and build the desolate places. So we can clearly see cut off don't only mean killing off a nation because the scripture says in, in Ecclesiastes all nations are here. He also goes into without jumping around. He also goes into um, we're talking about the 18 nations. He says there's 70. So when you look at Blake Griffin, who was father was an Israelite, mother was a white woman, possibly. And now he had a son with blonde hair, blue eyes. Now that son grow up and mess with a Chinese person or some other nation. What nation will he be then? This is how they characterize and bring nations into play. When all nations go back to stem to a root. That's another video. But I want to go here with Psalms 83 and 3. Um, where he was quoting... They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now, vocab is saying this is not talking about discontinuing from your heritage, right? It has nothing to do with that. It's only dealing with just cutting them off for good. So show me a scripture where it was talking about cutting them off from their so-called heritage or their heritage. And brother said, this is the scripture. Now, before I forget, 
He said it's all talking about the Old Testament. When Yahweh said in Hebrews, um, I come in the volume of the book, so it's the whole testament. Right? So when Paul was going, let's go to Matthew 10 and 5 real quick. What does this say? Matthew 10 and 5, which we all should know. These twelve Jesus, Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of Samaritans into ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So you can clearly see that even through our heritage, even though some of us knew we were Israelites, we were still lost because of the beliefs and the practices we took on. And some of us was just completely lost. Some of us was Greeks. Following after the Greeks, we can go into the uh, Maccabees. Right? So there's several instances where uh, even the northern tribe that left and some stayed back. So you can clearly see that our heritage was discontinued. But then he says that there's scrolls. <laughs> he said there wasn't any scrolls in Africa. Right? When we went down in the west part, no, no information of the Tanakh. What do you not understand about being cut off? Which there was information of the uh, the Torah, right, in in um, West Africa. In fact, we adopted Islam, right, over in Europe. We adopted Islam and other practices. And then what we did is uh, we fused our, our belief in the Most High. They called out the Yah. We fused it with other practices of African culture. This is what happened to a people. We were a destroyed people. And look how long it took for them to get us out of Africa. All those years, what the hell do you think we started doing? The Lord hid his face. When Job 30 and 29 says, when the Lord hid of his face, who then can behold him? So anyway, so this proves that of the Old Testament, the New Testament, you know, James 1 and 1, that we were just a lost people in general in both testaments and we're lost today right so let's go back to Psalms 83 was it Psalms 83 Psalms 83 it says they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation right that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance so I never looked this up yet as I'm speaking, I'm going to go to a different translation. I'm going to check and see what the translations say. Just to see if this is where Vocab Malone is getting this stuff from. we got to go to Psalms 83 and 4. They have said, come and let us destroy them as a nation. That's the NIV. Come and let us wipe. And see, here's, this is where we get it. The NLT says come and let us wipe out Israel as a nation we would destroy the very memory of their existence this is the problem with new translations modern translations this is the problem with that um, come let us erase them as a nation see the translations but the NIV says come they say let us destroy them as a nation just one, two words can change everything. So a lot of these translations do say, let us wipe them out as a nation. Meaning basically to destroy their heritage that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Um, let us destroy them. Let us cut them off. And we're going to go into the, the definitions. Um, but first I want to go also, I want to also go into an older Bible translation. Again, this is raw. This is my first time looking at this. Um, this is Psalms. Let me see if I could find it here. Psalms 83. And let's see what it says. It says Psalms 83 and 4. And you know, some of the translations are different. This is why I went through the modern translations. They translated it different. But we can look at the King James Version and go back and get an understanding. It just 
this is totally different. It says, uh, my soul covereth and faileth into the porch of the Lord. My heart and my flesh full, full, full out of joy to uh, quick God, right? This is very old English. For with, for with a for with a sparrow findeth an, a house to itself, and a turtle findeth a nest to itself. Where shall I? Where shall keep his birds? Where shall keep his birds? Lord of virtues. Right. So it's kind of like they took it out, but it's also describing uh, even what Yahweh Shah was saying. You know, certain animals have their place to stay and have their place to go. Right? That the Most High is going to eventually bless us. You know, because we are, we don't have any place. Our heritage has been stripped. So we've got to get that, that heritage back. You know, the Lord's, He's given it to us back as we speak. But I want to go to another Bible since that doesn't quite fully. Like I said, I'm going raw with this, 83 and 4. It's a Bible of 1500s. It says, Come say they, let us let us wrote them out from among the people. So we can clearly see when these translators start translating it, even the King James was more efficient when it says, you know, because it's translated from the Old English to a newer English. And it was said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Let's go to the actual blue letter. Okay. Let us cut them off from being a nation. Let's see what it says. What does the word cut them off actually means? And this is the problem with those translations. Cut off can mean to be cut off. You know, killed and cut off. Or cut down or make desolate. But did not Lord make Esau desolate and he came and built the desolate places? Right? It also means to be hidden, to be destroyed. How would you destroy it? That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now we know the Lord is not going to, this is the Lord's people. But for whatever reason, these people that's in the land, they have all the proof, right? This is what happened when you steal and you take, as Habakkuk 2 say, you take whole houses and heritages, you know? And then you say, well, there's no history there. This is what they did with the 1400s. And this is, if I was that brother, I would have told him that. The, the, the Renaissance, what do you think they did then? They repainted all those images and said, this is your new God. See, vocab and numbers trying to keep us asleep. It says... To cover, to hide. This is why our definition will say 1, A, B, C, D. To cover, to hide, to inface, to hum humiliate. Okay. Um, primitive root, to cut down. Um, pretty much to the point. Zechariah 11 and 9. Um... It's got different precepts to this. But I just wanted to show you that it that doesn't when it says cut off from being a nation, doesn't necessarily mean to cut off every people out of the Israelites, to make them fully desolate. But that's what Vocab believes that is from watching the New Age scholars. That's the problem with New Age eschatology as he <laughs> As he calls it. So. He says there was no evidence. Um, you know. There was no evidence of scholars. and Which you could. I mean of scrolls of the Hebrew culture. Yes it is. I mean I could Google that right now. There's all kinds of evidence. Of. Uh, what we was following man. But see what you see here is a man that don't want us to be the people of God. So now how are those people that he claims the people of God and they don't even believe in what he believes. They don't even believe in the New Testament. They don't even believe what he believes. 
So where's the, you know, now Yahweh Shah said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. So where's the evidence and the information that they're supposed to be having if they're the people of the chosen people of God? Now, they could be lost and don't know the New Testament, but we, for whatever reason, you know, we don't fit any of these prophecies. So what prophecy do they fit? They don't follow the whole thing. But I guarantee you he'll say, well, it's, this proves that they, they fit the prophecy. Now, going to Deuteronomy 28 and 48, right? Deuteronomy 28 and 48 says, He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, you know, till he have destroyed thee. Who else did that happen to? Let's go to Joel, the third chapter. I'm just quoting. It says, Giving a boy for a harlot and a girl for a wine that they might drink. Who else has that happened to? But with New Age eschatology, right, they'll figure out ways to make them fit it. Now, before the 48, you know, the 18th century, I mean, the, uh, uh, the 1900s, in the, the 1900s, in the 48, who was there? So how the heck did... Now, the, the argument should be, who are these people that claiming to be? Shouldn't be who are we? We, we see that the, the 64th verse say that we were scattered. So where is it that they are the people? That's If I was this brother, that's where I would have targeted. That's where I would have been. Where, where's the proof that they are? The stolen scrolls? Right? The stolen information? And then they don't even have all the information. They made it up as they went along. <laughs> but there would be no cry or argument against that. That's all I have on that, Shalom.